Hello everybody, I'm here at Paige's house and I'm gonna cook her a uh, semi-traditional meal of arroz con gandules with, uh, with chicken, arroz con pollo. <laughs> but because I don't have a traditional pot, I, um, we, we're gonna end up using shredded chicken that's already been cooked. And instead of green olives, I like, uh, uh, we're gonna put in black olives. Some people don't put olives, they put little pieces of ham, or if they even want to put mushrooms in it. Uh, but I'll just use the traditional tomato sauce to make the rice yellow. I already put in the water, I have to wait for it to boil. And because this is stainless steel, I put in, um, I spray this on it so that the stainless steel doesn't, the rice doesn't get sticky on it. Um, so we just wait for it to boil and get the party started. And also, we, we had a hard time finding uh, a, a very green plantain, so I got the closest green that I could get. And because I only got one, I'm gonna make very small slices and cut them up and fry them. And uh, I, put, I put them in salt, water with salt. So they'll taste good. And the thing is that uh, usually you would cut these in big slices, fry them, take them out, mash them, and then put them back in the, fr in the fry pan. But I'm gonna make very small, thin slices so I, I bypass that part of mashing them because I don't know how good it's gonna be since it's not very green. But we're gonna give this a shot. But I've done it before and it came out okay. So this will be a treat for Paige. And like I said, the Puerto Ricans out there that are truest, I apologize because I'm modifying <laughs> with what I've got. Okay, it's boiling, so let me put in the one cup of brown rice. Technically, I should have washed it before I put it in here. All right, then we'll live with that. And that's it for now. And I'll put the tomato sauce in now. And we let this simmer for a good half hour to even 50 minutes. It all depends on the rice. Like I said, you traditionalists, don't go ballistic. <laughs> because it'll still taste good. And let's put the top on. And I gotta remember to hold on to this. Don't wanna burn my fingers. Okay, what's the trick to this one? Thank you very much. Okay, that's it for now. And I'm gonna uh, put a bowl of water, I use shungite water, and put salt in it, just to give the saltiness to the plantains when I fry them. So we'll be doing that maybe another 30 minutes or so. What you doing, Miss Vivi? It's just boiling nicely, I was just taking up on it. I don't touch it yet. Uh, and we'll keep on waiting. Okay, we're back, I'm checking the rice. Boiling nicely. Oh, see, I see it, it's already drying up. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, the chicken in there. I'm gonna throw everything in here now. Even with the sauce, because I see that it's drying up already. Oh, these are pretty little olives. Good to the last drop. And then the gandules, which are the pigeon peas. I'm gonna throw it with the water in there too. Not throw it, pour it. <laughs> you can also, we also do rice dishes with garbanzo beans in it, which is good protein. Just mix this baby up. Like I said, I usually don't use a pot like this. Get everything heated up. 
Well, maybe another 10 minutes and this will be done. I can go ahead and cut up the tostones now, or put the banana now, get it ready. Because most families have it as a snack while they wait for this food to, to, um, to get done. I'm cutting up the, the chicken that's in there. Shredded chicken, perfect. And it's already been cooked, so it just needs to be heated. This is gonna be delicioso. That's all. Cut it in the middle. And open this baby up. Looks like it's still decent white. Right? Okay, I'm checking the rice. Looking good. And the juice from the olives and the gandules is giving it some more liquid in it. So I think this is gonna be excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. We don't have to cook all the plantains at once, but uh, I'll start it. So we can have a little taste because I got so many that I cut up there. Take this off. And I'm using canola oil. Usually you would use maybe uh, corn oil. I think this will be enough. I'll have to overflow it. Let's heat this baby up. While I wait for the oil to get hot, I just want to let you know that I call myself International Rican because at the age of four, we moved, my dad was in the Air Force, we moved to Japan. I lived in Japan for four years, and then we lived in, uh, we moved to Nevada, and then we went off to, uh, my dad was supposed to go to war. Which war? The Vietnam War, I'm going to lower this now because it looks like it's gonna be hot tamale. And could you imagine, picture this, my mother is like five months pregnant, and she has a 10-year-old, a 9-year-old, an 8-year-old, a 6-year-old, a 4-year-old. <laughs> Actually, was she 4 or she was 3? And she's having uh, a baby. And we're driving a station wagon <laughs> from Nevada all the way to Florida. That was a riot. But then he didn't go to war. So they wouldn't give us base housing. So then we went to Ohio. No, excuse me, went to Georgia for about a year. And that was an experience. Learning about cream corn. Looks like I could put a lot in here so they're so tiny. And then he had to go to war because my brother was already a year old. And then after he came back from war, he was gone for 13 months and my mother was able to visit him in Hawaii for two weeks. And then we went uh, from Ohio to Ohio to Germany. We were supposed to go to Spain, but the, uh, the, the president at the time, Franco, didn't want any more Americans there. Why didn't you, no, what did you say about the president? That we went, uh, had Alicimo Franco didn't want Americans there. So instead of going to Spain, we ended up in Germany for two and a half years, back in 69 to almost 72. And it was funny, because that's when Woodstock happened, and the Germans thought we were crazy. But it was weird to be in Germany, we couldn't watch German television, because they had a lot of nudity. For them, sex is beautiful, but not war. Because I remember Kojak and Hawaii Five-O were not shown, because they were too violent. That's one thing I remember. And they loved our sweet food. They would give my mother money to buy, um, the frosted flakes and the frosting, because their cakes are not sweet. So that was kind of fun. It was a good times because we left off base. My father always wanted us to live off base, off base, so we can have a good experience. And that was fun to be there. And then he retired in '72, and we moved back to Puerto Rico. And this time we had to go to a Spanish-speaking school, but uh, we had already been tutored the last couple of times we were there, so we were ready. 
Well, we try to be ready. <laughs> you can see as because I'm not going to uh, mash these, I'm, I'm just watching them as they get uh, darker and I will flip them. You don't really have to, but I like to do that. Well, here's a question. Um, how different is it to live in Puerto Rico versus the United States? Well, if you live in the country, it's different, and it's almost like any other country. I mean, out, out in the uh, countryside, because they all have their ways of doing things, and everybody knows somebody, and you have to be of the right political party. Uh, like a Democrat or a Republican. But they're, but they're good people. They love to dance, and Christmas is always the best. You pretty much stop working after Thanksgiving until the New Year. <laughs> and even then, the New Year, we have like 11 more days. We celebrate the Catholic holidays and the American holidays. So the kids, I think, have school off for like 15 times during the school year. So is the, the primary religion or religious belief Catholicism or? It still is, but there's a lot of Protestants, a lot of Pentecostals mm -hmm. and cults. Because <laughs> we have the, it's like voodoo. They have that kind of stuff over there. But see, Puerto Rico is not a, a, a people. It's a, we're all from different areas because I know Germans that moved to Puerto Rico. Uh, people after uh, the war, the uh, Second World War, came to Puerto Rico. A lot of Americans brought Jap Puerto Ricans brought Japanese wives. Uh, we call them Puerto Ricans. They're kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, like myself, I have uh, mulatto in me. And what's a mulatto for those who don't it's know a that mix. Term? A black with Spanish, or any other combination thereof. Because even Oriental people uh, live in Puerto Rico and they speak Spanish. See how it's getting yellow? It's a pretty color. Mm -hmm. So a mulatto, which I don't know if that's a derogatory term or not, but that is, uh, uh, what is that? It's a mix of black with- uh, Anybody. And, uh, pretty much, it's usually Spanish. Because okay. my grandfather was essentially uh, white, blonde, blue-eyed, but his, grand his mother was dark, and my father came out dark. And my father always said, if I would have been white, looking white, I would have been Governor Puerto Rico. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are racist, but they're racist based on class. Because uh, if you're dark-skinned and you have money, you're accepted, but if you're dark-skinned and poor, we want nothing to do with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is race, and it's crazy because we all speak Spanish. And a, and a black person in Puerto Rico would tell you, "I'm Latino first before I'm black." Wow, that's. I wonder why. Unlike in Dominican Republic, there, there's no blacks. Even though they're black, they're not black. They're wow, Spanish. that is so they don't, strange. They don't talk about being black. Now, do you have, do you ever travel? To, have you ever gone to? No, you never gone there. No. Dominican Republic. Wow. So being, um, did you, so when you went to Germany, did you learn, well, you were young, weren't you? Did your I was mother, a teenager. Okay, did your mother cook any German foods? Not really. We would. Uh, we had friends. My father got to meet a guy that was a, a retired race car driver, mm -hmm. and he took us to his house to have wine soup. Oh, God, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> but they liked their sausage. But what about Japan? Japan, I would have their uh, their raw fish and their salted crackers, or whatever it's called. My mother had sake and passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the full moat, and my mother said, "I realized how the uh, rotation of the uh, the water is there." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Ma, look at here. The water's going the opposite way." I saw, I recognized that. See how now it's getting nice and brown. I'm going to turn this off, and this is our snack. And I still have more here. Uh, to make for later with the meal. So I'm going to turn these off. I'm going to have a little snack. They smell great. Because when I was little, we lived in Japan when uh, President Kennedy was shot, and I told, I asked my mother, "Mom, we lost our president. Does that mean we can't go home?" I felt like we were going to get stuck in Japan because the president was gone. And she goes, "No, Vivian, don't worry about that." 
But the thing is, my brother, who was three at the time when we moved to Japan, became a stutterer because of the language confusion. And I didn't really, I, I, when I went to school, I just watched. I didn't really talk. And my mother would drill us with Dick and Jane, fun with, you know, the Dick and Jane books, and Dr. Seuss. And I was lucky that my parents spoke English. If not, I would have flunked school ten times over. Uh, but we hung in there. And I did learn Japanese words and Japanese songs. It was fun. Uh, but don't ask me now. I don't know a lot of it left. So and basically what you don't use, you lose. Because even when we lived in Germany, I took French in high school thinking that I would learn German. All I learned was the curse words. <laughs> uh, but I learned, uh, I learned my French and I even took it in college. But Germany was fun, so was Japan. I've lived in uh, Nevada, Ohio, uh, Georgia. I now live in Florida, and I went to college in Wisconsin because I missed the snow. That was a mistake. <laughs> when I graduated from college, I left and came back to Puerto Rico to, to work there. So would you, uh, so you, you like living in the United States? Yes, because I don't feel safe now uh, living in Puerto Rico, sorry to say. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Well, since I've never been there, uh, what seems to be the issue? Is it politics? But keep sh it's 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 the 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 violence, the drugs, uh, the people that could move to the states, especially after Hurricane uh, Maria, because Puerto Rico did take advantage of the uh, of the the federal government, and when they thought that we had our acts together when the hurricane came, there was no money. Even the, the electric company had been bankrupt for a year. So when we lost, the, they lost electricity, they really lost electricity. Because uh, my brother himself, he has a, um, a big old uh, water tank to take care of his water needs. And when you need uh, electricity, you flash out your candles and your flashlight. Wow. But, so how's the rice and stuff going? How's that going over here? I think here? we're almost ready. We are, okay. Well, let me call everybody in and uh, we'll serve this up and we'll see how it's going. So let's take a quick peek before I get out there. Because we're gonna just, if anything, just have the snacks of the, the, okay. of the tostones. Tostones. Oh yeah, it's still doing good. Ooh, all right. Okay. Okay. And let me go get everybody. I'll be right back. We can Ooh. take it outside. We'll be right back. How is it? Delicioso. Delicioso. Okay. <laughs> to me, it's a mix between a potato And a squash. I want to say it's like a yellow squash, but it's good. It's got a little bit of sweet to it. It's got a little bit of sweet to it, but I like it. I would actually make this, uh, what's it called again? Tostones. Tostones. So she's about to check this, so let's get back over here. Ooh. You can see it's still simmering from the juices from the the sauce of the olive oil and the gandula, so that'll make it nice. Yeah, because nobody wants to eat uh, hard rice. So this is looking nicely. Let me see if I can turn it. I see nothing sticking to the bottom, which is nice. There's also a thing we do called asopa, which is with, uh, it's a rice soup. And if I were to let this simmer in a lot of water, you could make this into a soup. But this is doing nicely. Let me t test one of the rice. Does it seem to be done? Yeah, it's ready. I oh, just, it's ready. I'll, I think I'm just gonna turn it off and let it simmer. Let the other water evaporate and we're good. I'm 
pues Santos Tones, ¿sabes? This is the second batch. And I'll give it to my hubby for him to try. Here you go, madame. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, it's hot. And there's more. Okay. You might want to wait until it cools down. I will. Try the tostón. Try the tostón first before you try the rice, because the rice is hot. Okay. See if it's the same, because I try to cook it more. I'm I, I taste squash in here. Excuse That's me. funny. So this tastes absolutely nothing like I thought it was going to taste like. I think the black olives is my favorite part as far as a, 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 a one of the many tastes in here. I absolutely like this meal. I really like this. I do. I think this is really good. So let me try it again.